Do you want to figure out how to take your rusty weight plates and take the rust off but keep the patina in the original paint? Well then this is the video for you. I found some old vintage Jackson weight plates at a local Facebook listing. They had some rust on them, but I could tell that they were a candidate for oxalic acid, my absolute favorite way to restore old weights. These four weight plates used to look like this, and now they look like this. You can see the huge difference. When it comes to these four plates, they were small plates. There was a pair of 10 pound standard Jackson weight plates, one Olympic five pound plate, and this standard five pound plate. In the case of using oxalic acid, if you've never used it before, then doing a project like this with some change plates is a really nice way to try it out the first time around rather than loading 300 pounds of plates into a humongous bin. I used a small shoebox to do this project. Here are the materials you're gonna need. First of all, oxalic acid. I buy most of these materials, including their oxalic acid on Amazon. And if you use my Amazon link that's in the description, it really helps out the channel. A couple pennies roll back my way. I specifically purchased my oxalic acid in these bags from Florida Labs. I've been happy with the results from their product and I like the price point. You'll also need safety gear. You're dealing with acid here. So wear some safety gloves. I like these tall rubber safety gloves. I love these old school safety glasses. I shouldn't have dropped them on the lens. Come on. However, I highly advise a well-ventilated area. For this project, I was in my garage with the garage door open, but you can also wear a mask if you're concerned. In terms of other materials, you're going to want some brushes, a nylon brush, maybe even a gentle brass wire brush. I like the brass wire brush from Forney. I see that it holds up well. One of my friends in the collecting world suggested this brand to me and I love it. You'll also need some materials for finishing the plate with oil and staying safe and not making a mess when we get to that step of the project. First things first, we're gonna fill up our little bin with water. This is where you have a little wiggle room. You're not baking a cake here. You don't need exact, like down to the tablespoon, down to the teaspoon amounts of oxalic acid. Generally, the more you use, the more concentrated it is, the quicker it's going to work. You can logically think through that, that the less you use, the more gentle it's going to be. For using my larger bins, I usually use three or four cups of oxalic acid and I get through a project pretty quickly. For this tiny little shoe box, I'm using half a cup of oxalic acid. And again, if nothing's happening, you can always kick up the concentration. And as far as it, oh no, maybe happening too fast and you're stripping off paint, I've yet to have oxalic acid strip off paint in any kind of fast manner. And you'll be checking on this every half an hour to hour so you would catch it anyway. Now that I have about half of the bin filled with water, I'm going to put my weights in and then I'll fill up the rest of the way. This just helps to evenly distribute the oxalic acid powder. It can't clump from storage, so you wanna get in there with your gloved hand and break up any clumps that you see, things like that, so that it really dissolves into the water and creates a solution that's going to completely coat your weight plates. I like to check on my weights about every hour or so. You can go a couple hours. You can go three, four, five hours if you feel comfortable with it. But these are extremely rare and I wanted to make sure that this process went well. So I checked about every hour just to see how the plates were doing. I take them out. I gently scrub them with the nylon brush and I found that things were going perfectly with this project. The rust was coming off and I was seeing a nice patina, meaning if you don't know what a patina is, it's when the bare metal that's been exposed naturally and very slowly rusts. I also saw some original black paint still on the plates. And importantly, I saw that nasty orange rust coming off of the plates. So after scrubbing them, when they looked perfect, I took them out. And if they didn't look perfect, I put a couple of them back in. This is where in the past I advised using a baking soda solution to neutralize the oxalic acid. Here's my best advice on that. If you're doing a small project, 
that you can immediately oil the plates, dry them off, and then oil them, just do that. Skip the baking soda. The whole baking soda thing, for me, was overkill with a small project that I was ready to just put oil onto the plates because the oil did a good enough job neutralizing the oxalic acid. I'm not a trained scientist. I don't know if it actually neutralized it. Part of the show we call Dr. Do so what happens to different foods in your body? What I can tell you is that practically speaking, I didn't see any more breakdown. I didn't see anything bad happening after I oiled the plates. The reason why I would use baking soda solution is if I didn't have time to oil the plates immediately afterwards. Because what you don't want to do is leave the plates sitting with the oxalic acid because you can experience flash rust and you can experience some bad things happening on that front. As far as oiling them, my best advice is that three in one oil, a little bit goes a long way. You don't need to douse these things. You don't need to be drowning them in three in one oil. If you'd like a non-toxic version of oil for your plates, there's a brand called Frog Lube. Frog Lube is made for gun enthusiasts and it's a non-toxic oil that I find does the same thing as three in one. It's up to you. I've personally never been bothered by 3-in-1 because after I wipe it off a couple of times, I don't have any residue left and I don't feel threatened by it. When it comes to wiping down your plates, I love to use a microfiber cloth. I buy the Amazon Basics packs that come in a pack of 20, I believe. Check my Amazon link to really help out the channel when you purchase those. And here's my best advice with this so that you don't make a mess in your gym. Wipe down your plates after about 24 hours. That's how long I like to let the oil sit on the plates. I leave them overnight. Then I wipe them down and then I leave them overnight again. I know that if you're itching to get this project finished and you want it back in your gym, leaving it for an extra two days sitting around is not ideal. Or if you're doing this project somewhere that needs to be used, like you pulled the car out of the garage and now you need the car back in the garage, that's not ideal. But if you can, just leave those days. The reason why is leaving a whole day really lets the oil do its job, protect the plate, then wiping it down the first time, you might think it's ready to put back in your gym, but there's been so many times that I wipe it down once, I put it in my gym, and the next day I find some oil residue because there's still just some left that's imperceivable to you in that moment. So I leave it a second day, I wipe it down with a fresh cloth the second day, and then I have great success bringing it into the gym and not getting an oily residue on my hands or seeing an oily residue on the plate. I hope you can use oxalic acid on a weight restoration project. It's the truest form, in my opinion, of restoring a weight because you're not stripping it bare and repainting it. I've done that. I have videos doing that for various purposes. But whenever it's possible to just take the rust off, I prefer to use oxalic acid and really retain that patina and original paint. This is Rob at Vintage Weights PGH. Thank you so much for watching please hit the like button, make sure you've subscribed, and if you want any products that you've seen in this video, use my Amazon link so that you support the channel. Thank you so much.